Welcome to episode three of the Global Health Division vlog. We sat down with Rachel Lowe, the founder of Physiopedia. So Rachel, you were the closing keynote speaker at CBA Congress last year in Halifax. For our members who didn't get a chance to hear your story then, could you tell us a bit about your journey as a physiotherapist and a physio techie? I can. Um, so I am a physiotherapist. I qualified in 1998 from Sheffield Hallam University. Um, so I took the normal route through physiotherapy, worked in the NHS, um, was a musculoskeletal physiotherapist I suppose. And I guess I worked for about eight years. Um, so I ended up working in having my own clinics. So I had three clinics around the Leeds area um, that I worked in. And, and I guess uh, after about eight years of working as a physio, and I think a lot of physios might uh, suffer from the burnout that we get from giving, giving away our energy. Um, so yeah, so I guess I got a bit tired. I decided to take a break, I guess. So we moved and I became a caravan site warden. Um, I was mowing grass and uh, cleaning toilets and things like that. So it was a nice break. Um, it was really nice to take a completely different break, but it's definitely, and it was lovely being outside every day and being really active, but it's definitely not very good for your brain. I started playing on the computers. Um, Tony, my husband, was working as an e-learning technologist at Leeds University and also setting up a, his own e-learning consultancy, so I kind of, and this is about the same time, this is in 2006, this is the same time as social media, which was then known as Web2 technology, it wasn't known as social media then, was coming in, so I started blogging, so I built my own website with a blog, um, and that's now PhysioSpot, so that was the first thing that came along. Um, taught myself to code a little bit with some help. I couldn't have done it without the in-house help. Um, so built PhysioSpot, um, started building some e-learning resources for universities in the UK for physio schools, uh, which was really interesting. I think they may were, they may have been some of the first online courses for physios mm. that that I knew about anyway. I'm sure other people were doing things at the same time. And so eventually, anyway, Tony dragged me to Altsy, which is the e-learning conference in the UK. Um, and that year, that conference was all about wikis. Well, as far as I was concerned, it was all about wikis. They were all talking about a lot of different things that I really didn't understand. Um, and, but I went to some wiki sessions because they were interesting. Um, and I came away thinking, this is really cool, why, why don't we have a Wikipedia for physios? So it took a while to persuade Tony that um, it might be a good idea to do. Uh, so we set up the code, so we use the same code as Wikipedia uses, which is quite complicated. So we set all that up and built Physiopedia. We are eight years later and it's a, it is Wikipedia for the physiotherapy profession and it's getting you know around a million page views a month from over 200 countries and so um, it's probably one of the the largest physiotherapy website or collection of websites in the world these days um, anyone's welcome to correct me if they think <laughs> i'm wrong <laughs> we've heard so many stories today of people who love physiopedia and find it a great resource so it's it's truly wonderful um, in terms of the sort of energy you spoke about, um, I think you transfer that to your volunteers really well. Um, how many volunteers do you have contributing to the site right now? Yeah, so we have um, a really good team of helpers. Uh, initially, it was just initially this was just a little side project. We didn't know where it was going to go. Um, it was just myself, just myself initially um, playing around with it and the people that contributed. And then I think um, a few years ago we started we started. Um, some people approached us, I guess, to volunteer and have a more formal volunteering role. Not really formal, but being recognised as a volunteer. So we've had a few volunteers for a few years now, as you know, Laura. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we now have, so we've done two years of um, a formal orientation course to volunteering, uh, which are great, they're really nice. Uh, there are so many people that are keen to volunteer. Uh, so on our volunteer, and volunteers come and go, you know, everyone's busy. Um, we really welcome people to volunteer at any time. Um, they don't have to stay. Some people stay for a year, two, some people stay all the time. Um, and, and that's great because we understand that physios are busy people. Um, so, and I think at the moment we have around 20 volunteers. 
uh, which is great. Um, they are, they are, we couldn't do it without them. So our volunteers uh, are our life source for keeping Physiopedia going. Um, we really couldn't do it without them. We need their help um, and they, they really do do a good job. So thank you to, mm -hmm. thank you to all you volunteers out there. Um, when we think of global health initiatives, we might often picture volunteers, you know, working in a remote village in a different continent with limited resources. But with Physiopedia, you've really sort of opened up the concept um, of global health to like so much more than this direct hands-on approach. With that in mind, what does global health mean to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, global health is quite complex, and our mission statement is to contribute to global health through um, universal access to physiotherapy knowledge. When I think about our mission statement and what global health is, I think of it in a physiotherapy context. So, as physiotherapists, we improve the health of people and we do that all over the world. It's easy for us in very high resource countries to be able to do that. To be able to access knowledge, to be able to improve our skill, to have access to courses and books and things like that. But we mustn't forget people in low resource countries who you know, don't have access to all this stuff. And, but it's really difficult for them to keep up to date. So global health to us is to enable to share knowledge across the profession from very experienced people in high resource places um, to people who can't access that knowledge and vice versa because it's really important and, and this has become really evident working on the project is that you know us in high resource countries we're very lucky but we need to learn about what's happening in the low resource countries as well because we can learn a lot from those people and we see that in our in our discussion forums that we can learn a lot about health in different countries and, and that is that sort of encompasses global health to try and understand how physios are working throughout the world and and how we can all make a contribution to indi an individual's health and therefore local community's health and therefore global health really. And so in terms of you sort of touched on it, I think, in terms of the impact that Physiopedia has, therefore, on sort of reaching and disseminating that sort of information. Um, and as we were saying, the number of hits that you get on, on the site per month, and clearly, we, you know, that information is getting out there, which is wonderful. Um, now, one of the things that you also have going on right now are the MOOCs. Can yep. you tell me more about those? The MOOCs are really exciting. MOOC is a massive open online course, and essentially all that means is that it's an online course but it's free for anyone to access at any time. Um, and I won't get onto my high horse about what MOOCs really are and what some people do and some people don't, but they should be open. You shouldn't have to log in to access them and you should be able to you know, repurpose and reuse the resources and all that sort of thing. So we collaborated with Michael Rowe, who's a university lecturer at the University of Western Cape in South Africa. So Michael has been, is also a physio techie um, so I connected with him quite early on in the Physiopedia days and Michael wanted to run a professional ethics course in Physiopedia. Um, so we did that, we ran the professional ethics course and there were 50 of his students on the course and we had 50 students from all around the world or participants from all around the world as well. So it was a bit of a trial online course, 100 people that did the course and it was great, you know, it was a really good course. We saw, even in that first course, we saw some really interesting interactions between you know, the physios in South Africa and physios in the UK and in the States communicating and um, you know, collaborating together on the course. And the next year, we, I contacted a colleague who had been collaborating with Professor Lisa Harvey in Australia and she, I knew that she had some online resources on spinal cord injuries. I contacted her and said, hey Lisa, you know, it'd be great to run a MOOC with your resources. And so we ran the spinal cord injuries course. We had, I think, around 3,000 physios wow. do that course. Um, that was really good. Uh, that went well. That just, and, you know, opened our eyes to how we can use what Physiopedia has and technology to bring all these people to together to learn and to learn from each other and to share knowledge. And then we ran the lower limb amputee MOOC last year which had around had what had eight thousand people register for it. Not all of those started but about five thousand started and a lot of them completed through to the end. 
And then this year we're running two MOOCs, which is quite challenging. So we're doing one on physical physiotherapy, exercise and physical activity in July, and another one on cerebral palsy later in the year with the International Committee of the Red Cross. And the stories that come out of them are amazing. On the last MOOC, on the amputee MOOC we had, we've heard stories about individuals in Israel and Gaza collaborating together. Wow. We heard stories of women in Kabul uh, managing to complete the course. It's amazing, like, <laughs> truly amazing. Um, in our recent Physiopedia eBlast, you mentioned a global health course that will likely run next year, I believe. Um, do you have any more information to share about that course at this time? Not really. Um, <laughs> um, so the Global Health course will be one of our Physiopedia Plus courses. So Physiopedia Plus is our is the member area where we run uh, more learning opportunities, more formal learning opportunities. So um, self-directed online courses. There are book chapters, books, quizzes, uh, video technique videos, and things like that in there. So we run a four-week, sixteen-hour course every two months around about that and our course in January is going to be global health um, and we are writing it at the moment so <laughs> so I've got no more to share with you on that. Hopefully it will be a kind of introductory course to future courses that are more global health orientated. We may turn this into a kind of global health program in the future but we'll start with global health and then thinking more along the lines of the amputee course and spinal cord injuries and burns and NCDs and those kind of topics that don't necessarily get touched on lots at university mm -hmm. or in other um, sort of areas of CPD so it's it's an area that we can really delve into um, and expand so that people who want to work in those environments in in, a, in other sort of global health environments can learn from these courses and take knowledge from them to take into those situations. Continuing the discussion on Physiopedia Plus, um, so as CPA members, we are very lucky that we have access to Physiopedia Plus um, through our membership. But I believe um, in other countries there is a fee associated with yeah. it. Um, but my understanding is that there is a discount rate depending on the country the member resides in. So where did the idea for that sort of the discount program come from? Individuals pay to access Physiopedia Plus. As you pointed out, CPA members are very lucky, very fortunate to have a very forward thinking member organisation who have purchased access for all their members to access Physiopedia Plus. We're a global organisation and we have a global mission um, to educate or to provide universal access to knowledge across the globe. And so people in low resource countries can't afford to pay the same as people in high resource countries, which is normal. We just decided to give discounts to low and, low and middle income countries um, based on the World Bank uh, database. So we use the World Bank recording, so we can't, you know, people contact us from some countries and say, you know, I, we should be a low income country, and it's just like, no, you know, we stick to the World Bank um, data uh, of who is a low and middle income country, and so low income countries get free access, there's low and high middle income countries who get a discount depending on where they come from as well. But it's just simply because it's fair, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bit fairer. Absolutely. Yeah. In the spirit of global health, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, now you faced challenges for your own health um, in the past, um, including your fairly spectacular knee injury from a skiing accident <laughs> a few years ago. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges you've faced since launching Physiopedia? Oh, very good question. I guess one of the challenges has been engaging people at the beginning, um, engaging people in editing. I think physios are busy. When we started out on this project, it's just like, yeah, you know, clinicians will be editing away and it'll be great. And um, wouldn't it be great if all clinicians just, everyone just took charge of one page in Physiopedia? That would be easy, wouldn't it, you'd think? Um, <laughs> But it's really challenging to engage people, but when you do engage people, they engage and they stay with us. And, and that's why we have such a good volunteer programme, I think, because there are some people that really engage and really like to use it as CPD. And funding's been quite a challenge. We've never sought large funding. We've always wanted to keep it a sort of project that the community's really happy with. So we've never had, a, we've never had funding for it. We've worked with some partners who have given us small amounts of money to get us to a point where you know, and 
just to get us through these first initial years. Now we're very lucky to be partnering with people like the Canadian Physiotherapy Association. That's been great because that, you know, that funding helps us to fund the whole project. So it's not about just um, paying for your access to Physiopedia Plus or anything, but it also funds the whole Physiopedia project. So we are able to keep to able to keep funding the open knowledge resource for everyone to use. It's nice that the funding comes from the community, comes from within our community, and and in a way that the community likes, that the way that the community can relate to. And then they get benefit as well, but it funds the whole project. Um, what are you, some of your favourite memories related to Physiopedia so far? You did touch on a few related to the MOOCs. Anything else that sort of pops out? Any particularly emotional experiences that stand out for you? <laughs> Emotional experiences, apart from throwing computers across the room and things like that, um, uh, when the technology breaks down. So they're always emotional experiences. Um, um, obviously the conversations that come out of the discussions in the MOOCs are incredible. People have a discussion and when you read back through the discussion you can learn so much from these discussion forums. So, you know, in the probably in the amputee course, you know, we're learning about people that have a limb deficiency from TB in their hip or something, from, you know, learning about all these different things that pe physiotherapists are working with around the world. We asked everyone, everyone was required to do a case study assignment at the end of that course, um, and a thousand people submitted a case study to complete that course, over a thousand. Um, and I had to read through them all to initially review them all. But um, as I was reading through them, um, it became so apparent that they were amazing. You know, this is 1,000 case studies about amputees, and they were all, re you know, really well written, really different experiences from across the world, from all these different people working with amputees. And I, and I did almost have a tear in my eye thinking, this is amazing, you know, this is completely amazing reading these case studies and I was just like, we have to do something with this because these cannot just sit in my, on my computer with no one else looking at them. So that, you know, that was quite an emotional experience and which I shocked myself mm -hmm. at as I was reading those. Um, and so, and that was quite amazing and we've now turned that into a case study database. So those case studies, or the best of those case studies, are available online. The take home message of your keynote address in Halifax was that the world is changing and physios must change with it, especially in relation to technology. Can you give an example of a change you've seen in relation to global health and how physios have been able to adapt with it? The internet has enabled physiotherapists from all over to now connect um, with physiotherapists all over the world and, and create a knowledge sharing community. And, that, and that's not just, you know, that's not physiopedia, that's just the technology is allowed us to do that and the internet and changes in the internet social media and that's just because of the internet that has helped allowed us to help to communicate more through across the globe so I guess the the main change that I see or that I relate to has been through networking and conversations and community development of communities um, because that's the world that I inhabit I think there's a lot more to come mm -hmm. um, we've been playing with virtual reality in the recent weeks, um, really interesting, coming up with um, some applications, clinical applications and applications to physiotherapy that uh, we've been playing with lots of ideas that where it might be applicable, but um, that is definitely going to be a game changer, I think, uh, in the future. Do you think that with technology being so integral to the uh, physiotherapy profession, as you said, with the changes coming, do you think there should be um, more integration of it into entry-level educational programs? Yes, <laughs> but I'm a techie, so I would say that. Um, um, I think because, uh, and it's not just about physiotherapy, but technology is changing our world. Mm -hmm. So uh, we all need to know how to use it. We all need to know how to use it appropriately. We all need to know what's coming. Um, you know, and, and you mentioned my keynote last year at the CPA Congress, and. And I talked about artificial intelligence and virtual reality, we just mentioned, and you know, genome therapy and and all this sort of all this um, quantitative self and, and data gathering and self measurement and all this stuff that's coming in. You know, it's it's our patients will be doing it. 
they'll be doing it before we are. You know, our patients will be doing it. We need to be able to engage with them on that level. And if we don't have an understanding of that ourselves, um, then we're not going to be able to effectively, you know, convey trust into our patients and be able to work with them in in what they're doing to ma self manage their own health and the technology that they might be using. So yes, I do think. It's important that we think about what our patients will be doing. Where do you aim to take physiopedia in the next few years, or perhaps more accurately, where do you see physiopedia taking you? <laughs> I see physiopedia taking us to an awful lot of conferences in the next <laughs> few years. Where do I? Where do we aim to take it? Um, physiopedia never has a roadmap. We never know where it's going. Um, it goes where the community, the physiotherapy community, wants it to go. We talk to people. We listen to people. What they want physiopedia to do, where they want it to go, and, and we try those things out. You know, if you think it should go somewhere, if, if anyone has any ideas, then you need to let us know because we're, it's easy for us to try them out. For physiotherapists or physiotherapy students who want to get involved with global health initiatives but aren't able, like right now, to physically go to a project abroad, do you have any suggestions for how they could contribute? Well, apart from volunteering with physiopedia, obviously. <laughs> volunteering with physiopedia is one way. Um, we're, a, we're a global community of volunteers, like I said there's about 20 of us from, I think we're from about 10 different countries at the moment, um, so we're a nice little global bunch. We have, over, we have users from over 200 countries use the site every month, so completely global. Volunteering at the WCPT is another way, so the WCPT is our global governing organisation. They, they're going through their strategic plan at the moment and I know that volunteering with them is a part of it, is going to be a big part of that, um, so keep an eye out for that. Do you have a pearl of global health wisdom that you'd like to leave us with? Get involved. Get involved in something global because knowledge sharing is very empowering and from the stories that I've seen and from the outcomes that we've had in Physiopedia I would encourage people to share your knowledge. However small it may be, you are expert in something, so everyone is expert in something um, and, and everyone should share that knowledge because it will make us stronger as a profession and allow us to contribute to improving global health on a, you know, on a really big scale. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Rachel. That was uh, really informative and I know our members are going to be so interested in seeing this video, so thank you so much. You're welcome.